Let's take a moment and talk about the Nobel Peace Prize. I, there's nothing more prestigious that you can win. It's basically like getting an Oscar for being a good person, instead of acting like a good person. <laughs> but the Peace Prize has been uh, on my mind because Recently, uh, Myanmar has been popping up on our news feeds, right? Uh, it's a country of 50 million people situated between India, China, and Thailand, uh, which means their food is, like, really good. <laughs> and, and right now, they're having issues with their leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, who is a Nobel Peace Prize winner. But lately, there are people who are saying that she should be forced to give her prize back because, well, there's no peace. Disturbing reports emerging of a new wave of attacks unleashed by government forces in Myanmar on the Rohingya, a Muslim minority considered one of the most persecuted groups in the world. Reports of villages surrounded, homes burned to the ground, torture, executions, and rape. Nearly 150,000 Rohingya have crossed into Bangladesh since August 25th, with thousands more at the border waiting to cross. Yes. Myanmar's army is systematically targeting the country's minority Rohingya population, which is a horror that is beyond belief. What's even more unbelievable is finding out who the villains are. One of the biggest puzzles about her nation poses a Buddhist country, which is supposed to be the most peaceful of religions, run by this Nobel Prize winner, but it is roundly condemned for its systematic persecution of a minority, a Muslim minority, as it happens. Here's the puzzle for people. They look at a Buddhist country uh, that is yet, you know, persecuting violently a Muslim minority. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but this is mind-blowing, right? Because I didn't even know that Buddhists could be violent. Like, this goes against everything I thought I knew about Buddhism. Violence is the complete opposite of what Buddhists are supposed to do, you know? Like, what's next? We're gonna find out that the Kardashians are secretly Amish? Like, what are we gonna, <laughs> you know? And it's like, oh my god, my father was threatening to cancel my rumshringa. <laughs> Hand me a pencil, I'm gonna draw a selfie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, violent Buddhists blows my mind. Like, did I have the wrong idea? Just because, like, Buddha is so chubby and cute and... No, he's like the Pillsbury Doughboy of major religious figures, you know? <laughs> and you know, and you know, Buddhists would be the most annoying people to persecute you. Because can you imagine while you're losing your <laughs> the Buddhist who's, like, burning down your house will be calm as <laughs> You'll be like, hey, man, you burned down my house! You'll be like, you cannot burn that which doesn't exist. <laughs> Are you <laughs> me? Everything I owned was inside that house! It's clear that you did not possess the items. The items possessed you. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, man. <laughs> now, already, the idea of a, a, a violent Buddhist is such a mind <laughs> What's just as twisted is a Peace Prize winner in a position of power watching the violence and going, shrug emoji? Do you ever worry that you will be remembered as the champion of human rights who failed to stand up to ethnic cleansing in her own country? No, because I don't think there's ethnic cleansing going on. I think ethnic cleansing is too strong a, an expression to use for what's happening. Oh, OK, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. I feel like you've already lost the argument when you're saying, hey, we haven't killed enough people yet for it to be called ethnic cleansing. <laughs> yeah, think of this as more of a light ethnic dusting. Come on, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Now, no, no, here's the thing. Myanmar is, is the kind of country where... It's not like America, right? It's the kind of country where the president doesn't control the military. So, Su Chi, some people would say there's nothing she can really do about this. But a leader with this kind of moral standing, you know, I think New York subway rules should apply. If you see something, <laughs> say something. <laughs> right? That should be the rule. Oh, and if you... And if you do, yeah. See something, say something. <laughs> and I will add this in. If you do say something, Try not to sound like Donald Trump. I think uh, this is due to fear on both sides. And this is what the world needs to understand, that the fear is not just on the side of the Muslims, but on the side of the Buddhists as well. You would accept, wouldn't you, that the vast majority of the victims of the violence have been Muslims? There is evidence that they have been yes, systematically Muslims targeted. Have been, uh, m Muslims have been targeted, but also Buddhists have been uh, subjected to violence. But there's fear on both sides. Did you hear that? She just both-sided ethnic cleansing. I bet Trump was watching that like, this woman is disgusting because of her views. No, she stole my lines. <laughs> she should no longer be president of marshmallows. <laughs> you mean Myanmar, that one. 
Like, I don't, like, I don't know. I, look, I'm not going to solve anything. I'm not going to solve Myanmar. Uh, I've only got 22 minutes on this show. If I had 40, done. Uh, <laughs> I do know this, though. Maybe we need to change who gets the Nobel Peace Prize and when. Because so many people have won the prize, and they've benefited from all of its prestige, and then they've gone on to not be peaceful. Like, maybe we should only give the Nobel Peace Prize to people after their career is over and they've passed away, right? It's at the end. We can call it the Rest in Peace Prize. Then we know <laughs> you're not gonna surprise us. You're not gonna hurt anyone, unless someone trips on your grave, but that's not your fault. <laughs> like, otherwise, if you hand the Peace Prize out like it's the best new artist award at the Grammys, you shouldn't be shocked if someday you end up with a genocide Milli Vanilli.